record on the computer. Live is ready to go. Here we go. We are going live here momentarily, waiting for some people to join on, jump in with us here. Rise Church family. I see. Oh, there we are. I see us live. Bring your questions. Oh, I got to mute myself. Hey, Dan Gonzalez, I see him there. Oh, Dan. I like Dan. We're getting us a crowd, a group coming together. I see Crystal Hirsch in here. Pam, Pam Thomas, Pam. Pam. Pam is now in the house. Crystal Hayes in the house. Hey, Crystal. Dan sent send us a hello. So We're I got to tell a story. Tell the story, Pastor. Tell the story. So I got on Facebook today. Yeah. And I, I asked a, a question that is getting me currently ridiculed and blasted on someone's thread right now. I saw that. I know where you're going with this. And it made me think, it made me question my judgment in asking a question. It's dangerous to ask questions on Facebook nowadays, you know? Sometimes it is. And it was about a pink cake. I, apparently this is a Mexican thing and I didn't know. So I actually called Stephanie Wright because she was the one who posted about it. And I was like, what is this pink cake? And she's like, pastor. She's like, you don't realize like two things. And I can't remember what it was. It was like pink cake and something else is how you know if it's a good thing do you know about pink cake uh well after because of my personality i don't just ask questions to people <laughs> to look stupid um so you went searching. i googled i googled pink cake um i don't i did I that make you google it, it? did my question yes. make you google yes it? yes because i saw and i was like hmm i should google this pink cake and, so that you uh, could be in support, so you could support Pastor, just help him out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was curious after you asked also, so I did. I did look up pink cake and see what it is about. What is it just what goes it to is? Show you. What it is? Yeah, it just it just it goes to show you. Don't ask questions if you don't want answers. Well, I guess that is true. I guess that's true in some sense of the word there. So how was my experience today? How was your experience today? Tell me about your day. Well, I haven't, I mean, I just working, not, didn't do anything fun at this point yet. Just uh, going through, going through things that have to be done. Listen to my daughter do uh, karaoke on Zoom with her classroom. Mm. You know, how exciting is that? Kathleen's yep. jumping on. I see Monica. I see Olinda. I see lots of, lots of folks jumping on here today. Daniel, Crystal. Hey, Pam. Tell Tony I said, what's up? My oh, man. Good to see everybody joining us today. Hit that share button. Get it out. That's right. Share, like, comment. I'm going to share it myself. Sharing it myself. You can join us. All right. So we're going to be talking a little bit about the weekend message and also if anybody has any questions. So ask away your questions. We'll get to as many as we can. And this, this is like about our. It's like full access to Pastor Jason and Pastor Aaron. That's kind of scary. Oh, I should share it. <laughs> I should share it on my I should share it, shouldn't I? You probably should share it. Hold on, let me That'd how do good. I do that from my Well, you have to be logged in as yourself and not as the church. Is if you log in as the church, it won't let you share from the, the comments. So and the easy way to log in as yourself, well, good luck with that. There's no easy way. You're supposed to be my uh, my technology guru. Well, I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, yeah, I just posted it. Did it post as me or the church? Um, let me see here. I don't know. So I'm logged in. I can't see who posted what. I'm How's everybody here. doing out there? Give us, um, give us what you you've did done. share. You did, you did? Share, okay. did you? Yes. Give us what you guys have been doing today so far from the morning you woke up to now. So it's noon, 
we're having lunch. We're sitting down. I'm having coffee in my rise mug. I had a peanut butter honey sandwich and I had water in here and it's already gone. <laughs> Do you, uh, Jay? Okay. Can I say this about you? Let me just say something about pastor Jason. He drinks anything that he's drinking. He drinks so fast. That's true. It's he gulps it. They made the big gulp in seven. Do you remember the super gulp in the big gulp? Yeah. Yeah. At 7-Eleven, yeah. I think they made those for you. I could drink a tall and just, I'm a sip, but I'm a sipper. I'm a little. Yeah, deep. I don't sip anything really. Dan's teleworking. Most people are, aren't they? I guess we're teleworking right now. I don't know how much working. We're telling something. School, Zoom, school. We got John shout out from City Mart. Hey, John. Hey. Genesis. What's of course, up, they're hearing man? this after we say it. We're we're responding like you know, forty five seconds after they say it. So there's that. He eats fast too. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, I do eat fast too. World Championship eater. Drinker. I just I think I'm like nervous or something. I don't know what it is, PJ. Like when I get around you, you make me nervous to drink too slow. I get self conscious. I feel like I don't. I, I don't judge quicker? anybody for how fast they drink. I do not judge anyone at all for that. So. Come on, Justin Smith's on it. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. He probably didn't watch long. He saw my face and was like, never mind. We need to bring him on a, a, a pastor's corner one day and just talk yeah. kids ministry. I thought three of us. I'll could shoot him do a it. text. I'll shoot him a text. Bring him on right now. See what he's doing. Let's do a live bring him on. He ain't doing nothing. Bring him on. He's probably, he lives in Florida. They do lots of stuff there. There's beaches out there and uh he just waves we could bring him in and we bring him in like a like a for a 15 minute kids ministry family ministry session i like justin he took me to the mall of america yeah i took you to the mall of america too you did too but did, it was was it was it the same time was it the same time did we go or did i think we connected maybe he came and met us there no, because I remember you and I met, and then we met, and I got to meet him, see with him and his wife. We walked around the Mall of America. Yeah, when I brought you to the Mall of America, it was kind of embarrassing because you were like everywhere, and it was, it was, it not. was like, it was embarrassing. And then like we saw one whole other area, it's so big, and then you see another area, and you're like, oh, is there's more over there? And then we didn't even go on. Did we go to the other side? I don't know if we did. You normalized before. you normalized the Mall of America. It's amazing. It's it's okay. If you live there, it's like eh, you know. If you've just, been to the Mall of America on here, please say something in my defense. That place is amazing. It's just annoying. He said, I'm in the drive thru about to get back for a meeting. Oh, uh, well, mm -hmm. you know. He's that just sounds too busy. likely. He's, he's too busy. He's he's exactly Monica. That's how all the tourists say. He did. He looked like, no offense, he looked like a tourist with a camera walking around, like, look how big that is. You know, I was like, somebody this the whole from time. like somebody from like Missouri or something. It was awesome. I enjoyed the Mall of America. I felt like it was uh, it was powerful. Justin's rolling his eyes like you roll your eyes at me. Wow. You guys roll your eyes at me collectively. There's like a collective eye roll for everybody who lives in Minnesota. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone who's ever lived in Minnesota is like, yeah, the Mall of America. No, I used to love going there, but I didn't go there to shop. Um, I went there to look at people. So that's why People watch. There. People watch. That's true. People watching. Minnesotans. Minnesota. How did you not go? There was no tax. Here's the crazy thing tax free y'all tax free that's at least one or two more clothing items when i go shopping yeah i mean i bought clothes there i mean i would go into h&m get what i needed to get and get out like that's it but you don't ex you don't have an experience if you do that no i experience getting the clothes i want and i'm done i watch people for a minute i'll get look at the weird people doing weird stuff then i leave like, like me with good. the camera Yes. Yes. I was so embarrassed. I was like, I don't know this person. I hope no one sees me here that I know. <laughs>
Hey, to your credit, I will say this. There's probably many a times where you and I go places and I embarrass you and you always just power through to your credit. I, and I probably embarrass you a lot too. I get it. I embarrass you a lot probably by how fast I eat and apparently how fast I drink and it's very embarrassing. So, I always try to like, when I go out to eat with you, I'm always nervous. I'm always like, Oh man, I got to eat. Cause I can't have him just sitting here watching me eat. Normally I just try to take my time. All right. So anybody got any questions for us today? So far, I haven't seen anything that's got great questions coming out of our texts here. You guys can ask any questions about the weekend message, especially the great weekend message. Um, the first week of happiness is preaching from Jesus's Sermon on the Mount. Not on the mound. He wasn't a baseball player. Mount. <laughs> Uh, some people say sermon. sermon on the mound that's different that's 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 different um but the it beatitude dad joke what's the dad joke did it was in the sermon when the mount when i preached it i said it's a sermon on the mount i said you want to know why they preach it why i call it a sermon on the mount because they preached it on a mountain that was my dad joke in the front of the sermon but nobody laughed because nobody was there because well, nobody was there uh, <laughs> well i told you this question was coming pastor aaron and here martha comes through with the question when will the church reopen will the church be open again of course we've been open we're just not in our building uh yeah that's a great question that's the billion dollar question for us yes yeah so um Every week, so you guys should know this, you know, our, our strategy for as a leadership team and, and Pastor Jason is a part of this and, you know, our strategy as a leadership team is to uh, take it week by week. We know some churches are like, we're canceling for six months and then we'll reevaluate. Well, I, I probably uh, would think that they've probably made some changes and adjustments inside of that situation. Um, ever since COVID-19 started, it's been kind of a daily, weekly change. And, um, you know, I think a great leader um, reads and reacts. And right now you have to kind of do that because, I mean, you know, we, you know, if you go back, shoot, two weeks ago, they said, to, well, you know, what was it? It was like 250,000 people were going to die. And yeah. then, you know, four days later it was, okay, 150,000, then 100,000. Now we 60,000 is what they think it's going to get to. Yeah. And that all happened within a matter of a week. You know, so I think the best thing we, we try to do is just read and react and, and, and make wise decisions in the moment. And so um, obviously plan ahead, try to be ahead of where we're planned. We're actually, you know, we had a staff meeting yesterday planning contingency plans. What are we going yeah. to do? How are we going to sh yeah. shift? How can we, you know, what would happen if we, you know, if the government opens up and says uh, 25, 50, 100. So we're walking through that yeah. as a leadership team. Um, but for us, we, we try to just let out a week in advance. So we do two main things on the week during the, every week, just so that if you don't know, and if you need to get signed up for our emails, cause we send out emails, we use emails important and we, we don't blast and spam. We send out emails that matter. We take it seriously. We try not to put like a giant paragraph of nothing in it. We try to give you information you want to know, and it'll give you primarily, um, what's happening with the church this week. Uh, this coming weekend, um, I attach a video that I record as well to it. And um, um, I do a lot in it to make sure that that we're doing the right thing to give you information. So when we clear and bring clarity, um, and then uh, so we do that every week. And so with that, um, to answer your question, we don't know. Um, we're just being honest. We don't know when we're going to get back together again. Um, the, there's a lot of questions that come into play. Um, just cause we can, uh, the statement just cause we can, doesn't mean we should, uh, comes yeah. into it a little bit. I think part of it is, is my number one job. I'll give you kind of like my number one job right now. I would say is like the number one, number two job is not just delivering you spiritual food and making sure you're okay. But my number one job is to make sure you're safe. And I would feel terrible. We would feel terrible as a leadership team. We would feel terrible as a church as if we had church just to have church and get together and then something terrible happened to someone. And, and the hard, here's the hard part about all of it. We don't know 
like you couldn't point back that it would have been you got you know say somebody got the virus or whatever they couldn't say that it came they couldn't trace it all the way back to us maybe they got it Safeway or you know or HEB or whatever you wouldn't know and the problem is with that is is we don't know so we're just trying to walk out what's safe what's uh what's doable we think our online experience is really great right now obviously online is not the same thing as getting together we don't think we'll ever that's not we're not called to do digital ministry we're called to do church mm -hmm. but right now yeah, we're yeah. doing digital ministry because we can't get together and do our local gatherings so to answer your question we don't know um yet uh we hope soon we we're going to take the advice of my board my pastors um men around the country, leaders around the country, government officials, health care officials, and then we'll pray and seek yeah. God and ask ourselves, what's the wisest thing? In light of our presence, our, our past experiences, our current circumstances, and our future hopes and dreams, what is the wisest thing for us to do? So, so my good. promise to you is to be wise in our decision makings and you know what, here's the deal. No matter what decision we make, one of you guys are going to be upset with us. You're going to think we went too early. Some of you are going to think we went too late. And that's the tension of a leader. I'm okay with that. I'm just not okay with us doing something unwise. It may be it's too good. Quick. So it's good. Um, and, and, you know, to address, to add on to that, we, we are aware that the governor said that churches can reopen. However, understanding why the governor had to release that document or why they chose to release that document is somewhat again i'm not a lawyer nor do i play one on tv or on zoom calls uh, but it's clear that they were trying to make sure that they didn't have to deal with any lawsuits from churches who decided that they were going to go ahead and you know cite the freedom of religion to continue to meet so if you look at the recommendations of the government, we couldn't do those recommendations to open right now. And the, the space and the facility and the size of a congregation that we have, that would not be feasible for us. And it wouldn't be wise, as Pastor Aaron said. So I just wanted to add that on. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough situation. I'll just say this. Every church in America right now is fighting. I've been on Zoom calls. No one knows what the right answer is. Yeah. No one knows what the right it's answer good. is. So it's just trying to be safe. Um, this is a good question came in. Another question. This, uh, we have a few here now. This might yeah. be off topic. I'm sorry. I have an answer for this question, by the way, but I'll hear what you have to say first. My son's guinea pig died yesterday. I was trying to explain to him what a soul is. It was tricky, and I probably left him feeling more confused. Can you give any advice on how to have this conversation with a child? Go for it. Okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, here's how we have used and described this to kids over the years. Um, and you may be aware of this. We are a, what, what I would say, a triune being. In other words, we are a spirit. That's the true us. We have a soul. Our soul is our mind, will, and emotion. Sometimes people conflate spirit and soul together. That's okay. There are some scriptures that even do that. And then we live in a body. So I, I'm a spirit, I have a soul, I live in a body. That's the way I look at it. Paul wrote about it, spirit, soul, body. You know, multiple times throughout scripture, we see, uh, you know, the sundering of spirit and soul, spirits, you know, there, there's a, there. And so what we've done to explain that to kids is um, we look at our body as kind of our, we use the term sometimes like our earth suit. In other words, this is the, the suit we have to live in to live on the earth that we're really a spirit that we can't see and that we have emotions, we have feelings, we have a mind, we have thoughts. That's all part of our soul realm of who we are. And, uh, and so understanding that we are a spirit, we have a soul and we live in a body. The body is what dies on this earth, but the spirit lives on forever. If we, this is of course how we set up like making Jesus the Lord of our life, because that's, that's, why we want to make that decision. One of the reasons we want to make that decision is because we want to live with him in our spirit forever in heaven uh, and then where we know we get a new body. Um, and so we'll do that. We'll, we'll sometimes refer to it as like, I know we've used like an outline uh, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a kid. We'll have a kid and we'll cut him out and then we'll have another version of him and that's his soul and another version of him and that's his spirit. And you don't see the spirit and soul because they're, they're inside the body. Um, and so really what death is, is, is our spirit and soul leaving our body, 
behind. And so that's a simple, simplified version of it that will. Hey, you know what you should do? You should make that a video and put that on our parents' kids page or something right now. I could do that. That'd be great. You know, just maybe I'll just clip what I just said and make that work. Maybe I'll do that. (laughs) Yeah, because I think that could be a good topic for people. You know, even with my children, they're asking me about what's this coronavirus and yeah i think i think it's okay to bring them into the conversation you know I, yeah i think it's sometimes you kind of like try to protect your kids like oh well, we're just on vacation we're just on break we're just on break yeah. that's not what's going on yeah. and a lot of their friends have talked and know and walked through this and i think it's okay to address like man there's a disease going on mm-hmm. and we're trying to be safe and we're praying for our government to make the right decisions and they're having to make decisions for millions and millions of people collectively yeah and if you've never been a leader mm-hmm. you 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 won't understand that like you that's why i always laugh like it doesn't matter who's in the oval office it doesn't matter what political party you are mm-hmm. like when you have to lead millions of people so upon good. millions of people, your whatever decision you do make is going to irritate and honestly anger millions of people. And so what you're trying to do is make the best decision you can collectively with the values that you have. And that that's just incredibly hard to do. And so I think explaining, so I say a lot to say, I think explaining the situation to a kid about maybe that could be a good topic to even talk about. Maybe you and Mr. Ben could walk yeah. through that and, and just how do you talk yeah. to your kids about COVID-19 right now? Have we done anything like that? Maybe we have, and I just don't know, but I um, thought not particular. I don't think so. I don't, I mean, I may have posted some links to some articles, things like just that. Talk, People who but are wouldn't that be than so me. good just yeah. to be like, I would want to know like, what does pastor Jason think about mm-hmm. talking to your kid? Like what would be the best way to address this situ- current situation with your kids? Cause they don't leave them in the hole. Don't leave them in the dark is what I'm saying. Like in yeah. the Minecraft dark, you know, there's some things that are appropriate to tell them and then yeah. there's things that aren't, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's, I, I agree with that. I think there is just a certain part of like, you do have to figure out what's appropriate for the kids to understand, you know? Um, I think that's, that's, uh, you know, I think kids do understand more than we often give them credit for. And so um, having, conversations with them and, and, and it being okay to be like hey here's as far as I understand it and guess what I still have questions I think sometimes as parents leaders we get this like idea of like well if I don't have it all figured out like there must be something wrong well no none of us have all this figured out none of us can you know the fall of man going back to the fall of man has made everything since then very complicated right uh and again, let's just say man hadn't fallen. God is an, a, an infinite being. We have a finite mind, understanding all his ways and his, you know, plans and his thoughts are, he does say his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And I believe they're probably infinitely higher uh, than our thoughts. And so sometimes we try to over, you know, simplify and in the light of, we don't really want to have, we want to squash all questions but i think there's a certain point of like that's a great question i'd love yeah. to i'd love to figure that out someday too here's what people i'm real big on like here's what people say here's one camp of what people say here's another camp well what do you believe dad well here's what i believe i want you to choose you know if it, again if it's not my for death you know belief about something i think i think you know educating ourselves to the place where we can explain different stances and positions on i think it's good yeah no it's good we got another question here um how else can i love someone well who is dealing with drug addiction besides love praying encouragement giving the resources needed to get into rehab man you could take that i mean you got you've had that hit home pretty quick and pretty recent um yeah so uh if you're not if you're not uh, with, if you're not familiar with my, uh, background, I have, a, I've lost one brother to drug addiction, um, a couple of years ago now, almost two years in July. And, uh, I think 
you know, I think all those things that you're doing are good, you know, love, praying, encouragement, giving resources. Those are, those are all the right steps to take. Um, situationally, it just depends on like, okay, what are the boundaries that you need to have with that person? Is there somewhere where you need to say, no, nope, we're not going to do that. Um, you know, I think the problem for, for, for most people, for at least for my brother and for people that I've counseled is they, they don't, if you don't cut off those old friends and those old connections, you'll never be better. Yeah, um, and, and there's probably a spiritual principle in there, and we know that there's a spiritual principle in there, and is that 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 the people we surround ourselves with, we become like them. Uh, you know, the Bible has a lot to talk about with friends. As parents, we talk a lot about like, I care who my kids' friends are. Why? Because I know that they're going to become the composite of those friends. If they have a bunch of friends who are causing trouble all the time, eventually they're going to be trouble. That's why we push groups. Man, we want to get you around people who are growing, who are praying, who are believing God, who are trusting God, who are living in grace, who are walking in love and walking out God's plan for their life. Why? Because when you get around those kind of people, you can't help but do those things. And so I think the same thing, whether it's a person who's, who's, who's struggling with addiction, it's, it's, the, it's the key of like, how do we find people that they can surround themselves with to help them in their recovery? Right. Um, and, and, and to tear up that Rolodex. And I think that's what, what the one thing that got my brother is he didn't, he didn't get rid of everybody out of that. Room. You know, I know I'm using an old, old term there. The Rolodex is, is contacts list. If you will, he kept some contacts, even after he got clean, he still had some contacts outside of the clean realm. And, uh, those were the people he went back to. And when he had that moment of failure, he went back to one of those people and that moment was deadly for him. He lost his life over it. And so not to oversimplify again, I just criticized oversimplification, but there's just some of the things you can do on top of that thing is just try to be there for him encouragement. But at the same time, there has to be boundaries. So I know for my brother, I had to have to say like, Hey, no, nope. uh, here's the things you, you know, we allowed him to live in our house for a, a season, but here's the things you can do in my house. Here's the things you cannot do in my house or you cannot do on my property or in my neighborhood. Like, and again, not all of them were drug related. Some of them were just habit, other habit relates relations. And it's like, no, 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 uh, we're not going to allow that in my home. And so it's just uh, loving them. But at the same time, I think uh, you also have to have boundaries for the person uh, to help them to know they're, they're, there is no such thing as love without boundaries. That's not, that's not true. I know you've talked about boundaries, Pastor, um, lots here that, that some part of loving a person can be just like, hey, here's the line we will not cross. Yeah. Well, and I, I think too, I think the nature of the answer to that question, I mean, like, I think just as I'm walking through it, um, as I just walk through that question, I, I just want to say like, man, I feel for you. I know me and Pastor Jason, yeah. we just feel for you. You know, we're sorry uh, that if anybody goes through that, you, you just, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you'll never forget it. You know, it, that's just a yeah. rough, rough thing. Um, but I will say this, like, I want you to read your question too. Like, I think this is important. Yeah. because I think yeah. sometimes it speaks to the, the nature of humans. And then I think the nature of yeah. Christian culture. And it said this, it said, how can I love someone well who is dealing with drug addiction besides loving praying, encouraging, and giving the resources needed to go into rehab. Like, my, my only question to you would be like, what else can you do? Like, mm. I think at some point, like, we have to be okay with like, no, no, I'm not their savior. Amen. And yeah. like, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not required to I mean, look, look at what you did. You listed four things that I would have told you, like, if you just asked me, what do I do? I would have told you those four things. Yeah. And then like, I think there's almost like a natural, like, what else can I do? I got to help them. If I don't help them, they're not going to make it. That's not true. I think yeah, God uses so people, but I think God uses multiple styles, multiple angles, multiple levels of people. And I think it goes back to just do what you do. Like you do what you can do. And then once you do what you can do, you have to rest in that. Like, and I know that like, you know, my family struggled, they would, struggled with that and dealt with people who have gone through addiction issues and problems with stuff. And, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying don't do anything. I'm saying 
applaud, take a breath and applaud yourself for what you have done and then go, because here's what happens. I think sometimes with those people, they don't, they're not healthy. So therefore they can't see healthy. They can't speak healthy. They can't act healthy. And then they say, and they project their unhealthiness onto you. And they say things like, you shouldn't have done this to me. Yeah. Why don't you love me enough? Um, you know, the reason I'm going through this is because you right. I mean, like, come on, we've heard those all statements. I mean, mm-hmm. if you've dealt with someone with addiction, that's what's said to you. And yeah. it makes you question, did I do enough? Let me just tell you, if you did anything, you did enough. Like you just got to rest in that. Like God, God is, God is big enough to work through you and work in spite of you. And I think you can pray for them, love them and just be okay with you not being their savior. That seat's taken and let, let, let God do his thing. Do your part. Like, I think you, there's a part you have to play, but I think you played that part. And then let's just see, let's watch God work in the process. Um, Cause I do think that God works through pain and mm-hmm. teaches us things through pain that if you're sometimes we're quick to take the pain away and yeah. save them from the pain. And sometimes the pain is what they need to move through and yeah. to the other side. So yeah. I, I, I just, that's kind of the thing that stood out to me was like, let's just, man, let's just be okay with us doing our part and God doing his part, you know? Yeah. That's I good, Pastor. My thought. I, I think that brings me to the point. It's like, at the end of the day, you can't help anybody who, who refuses to be helped. Yeah. Like, they have to want it. They have to be able to. You can't rehab for someone else. Mm-hmm. And if, if, they, if they could, I know my parents would rehab for Tyler. I would have rehabbed yeah. for Tyler. I would have done it at all. I would have taken all 12 steps, 144 steps. How many steps do you want me to take? I'll take every single one of them for you. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, he had to want the step. He had to want it. He had to want it. Um, and, uh, you know, we want to encourage, like, find your, find your, you know, each person has to find their way with that. They have to, um, they have to want something. They have to, again, even in coming to Christ, we come to Christ because we can't save ourselves, right? He's right. our savior. That's, that's the gospel is he's good. The good news is, is that we couldn't save ourselves. He came. But there is a point of where we must surrender our will to him. Not my, not my efforts. I'm not going to be saved by my efforts, by my ba- being good. Like I surrender and I need your help. Um, that's a person, that's God saying, that's the gospel. Is like God can save us because we can't save ourselves. And so right. when we start to, I agree, I agree with you, when we start to think that we're the savior, we can save other people. We really can't. We can't even save ourselves. Right. Yeah. So good. Love it. All right. Well, if you have any other questions, throw them in there. Uh, we are, uh, you know, answering questions, walking through the message, uh, as we're on the beatitudes here, uh, just love, love like your, your setup for this pastor, Aaron, you know, the things that brought us happiness are being challenged as you were setting that up in the series and you're talking about the beatitudes and opening up the words of Christ and his message there. Um, obviously like never before the things that have brought us happiness have been challenged. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty crazy to think like how much, how much I saw, so I always said this, like when I was, if I was to do a happiness series mm-hmm. before COVID part of what I would be trying to do is convince church members and convince our world that you don't need all of these things for your happiness. Don't look to mm. money. Don't look to people. Don't look to food. Don't look to entertainment. Don't look to these things all bring external levels of joy, right? Or, or happiness, but like, don't look to those things because they're temporary. What's so unique now is everything that was um, like everything that was, we used to look for. We don't have it. We don't even have some yeah. of the, like, we just can't even do it anymore. So you know, I'm a hugger. So like in that first physical kind of connection, like I'm a hugger. I like being around people. I, I recharge being around people and parties and I go to the party early. I like going, staying late. I just want to be around people and talk and hang out and eat. And just, I, I love the beach and parks and malls. I mean, like, I love all that. And what's so funny is, is I'm like, in this moment now where I'm like, I don't have any of that and I'm not happy. And I've realized how much I looked to those external things 
you know, mm-hmm. for my happiness and um, which is causing, you know, like, man, it's really causing, it's almost doing, it's funny to say it like this, but COVID is doing part of my job as a pastor. It's removed yeah. everything that I think people look to, um, you know, some might call them idols because you look to it to give you something only God can give you really. Mm-hmm. So good. So good. We talked a little bit about that in my small group last night. We did a parenting small group and we were talking about just the idea of, you know, kids feeling entitled to things. You know, we, we, we have that struggle where because we maybe have a better life than what our parents had and we try to provide so many things for our kids and finding that line of where um, where like, what are we really searching for? What are we really finding our happiness in? What are we finding? And, uh, you know, kind of brought up the fact that God had to, he, he often, he wants to get the attention of his people. And again, I'm not saying, I don't believe doctrinally that God caused COVID to judge America. I I understand people who say that I, I, I get it. I understand that. I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is God is using this to re-align us as his people. He, if right. we will allow him, he will, he will allow us. To, he will, uh, again, realign our happiness. And right. Carlos had a great, asked a great question there. So once everything goes back to normal, in, in quotes, which probably won't be, how do you deal with not falling back to the search for other happiness? It's a great question. Man. I think here's just my, my take on that. I think that is the struggle. Like what, yeah. what you're talking about is what gives me job security. Like if I'm honest, I think the human condition naturally goes back to look at all those things. I think you need mm-hmm. a constant reminder to go, wow, what I thought was giving me happiness is not true happiness. I need to remind myself of what i'm looking for you know we look for freedom in so many different ways in so many different areas and once we truly get i think sometimes it's like um i think this is an enneagram thing i think you told me about one time but like my personality type so i'm an enneagram seven i know you're an eight and so for me i have huge disappointment i have really highs high highs and then i have really low lows and the best part of the party for me and I think, I think is what you told me from some of your research is not even the party. The best part of the party is leading up to the party is like my anticipation towards what is going to happen. And then like I get into the party and it's never what I want. Right. Or it's never mm-hmm. what I think it's going to be. But I think that's how it is with like some of these things that brings us happiness. We have to remember like, we build these things up in our mind. Cause I know like I can get up there and preach like money won't bring you happiness, but everybody in this crowd is saying under their breath and in their minds are like, well, give it to me. And then I'll let you know. If I'll, let, let, I'll let me try. Let me try. Yeah. Give me some of it. I'll try and see if yeah. it makes me happy. Yeah. 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 So I, I get it. Like I, I get that, but I think you have to just, this is a great opportunity that's been given to us. We should write in a journal. You should make a video. You should make an audio recording. You should write it on a sticky note and make it so vivid for you to realize and remember and easy to go back and remember what it felt like and say, remember what this felt like so that when I do have an opportunity, I can truly figure out, man, I I can remember it wasn't what I thought it was. Actually, I found more happiness because I think, you know, the first part was shock. Everybody was in shock and in awe. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Everybody's freaking Mm -hmm. out. I even mentioned um, a little bit about this that like, most of us are experiencing, um, you know, uh, uh, a happiness, uh, a, a really, I think a happiness issue right now. Yeah. Um, I didn't put this in my sermon. I cut it out at the end, uh, right before I did it. But I, it's, I said the survey that recently had, I think it was like a Nielsen survey or something said 45% of adults, um, say the pandemic has affected their mental health. 90% say it's major impacted nearly 7 million people mm-hmm. are affected by generalized anxiety and 6 million with panic disorder. And that was all before COVID. And so now you're seeing a sharp increase in that. And so I think because of it, you're, you're starting to see like, I just think it's revealing the cracks in all of our pots. And so we just kind of got to go back and go, wow, 
the thing that I didn't, I think you can, I actually really think this, I think when, when we go back to regular life ish, I don't think it's going to be what we thought it was. And I think what we really, really, I don't want us to miss the moment, I guess is the issues. I don't want us to miss the moment right now. It's, it's interesting. We drew some parallels in the scriptures to God's people, the Israelites in the old Testament if you understand the history of the old Testament that, uh, you know, they were, Moses brought them out of Egypt into the promised land and the promised land was a land flowing with milk and honey, which was a metaphor for everything you could ever want. Uh, and God made that a part of his promise and a part of his blessing. So right. it's right. not that God was like, no, 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 this is evil. But what you see happening throughout scripture, if you understand and you, and you interpret scripture with scripture is, those things became God to them. And in order for God to really get their attention back, what they had to do is they actually had to go through an exile where everything they had was taken away. Sound familiar? Like everything they yeah. found blessing in was gone. Everything that they enjoyed was gone. It was all gone in a moment and it was all taken away from them. Um, that was the only way God could get their attention. Right. Again, don't hear me say something I'm not saying, you know, be clear. What I'm saying here is I believe God is using this to get our attention. Like, Hey, 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 Hey. He tried to get their attention outside of that. I'm not saying this is an exile. He tried to send prophet after prophet to get their attention. And so I see parallels with that. Again, I'm not saying God, this is God's judgment. Any of those things you might believe that that's fine. I'm, I'm not saying that I don't believe that. I just saying like, it's clear as day that God is using this to get our attention, regardless of your belief. that like, this is a, you know, God's judgment or whatever your, your stance might be on that. I wonder, uh, I'd love to hear any questions from the message. Anybody, if any, any questions, you know, I know if we talked, we talked about like, uh, I remember, uh, blessed are the poor in spirit. Um, yes. I love just being able to break that down for people. And yes, you know, the Jesus four depends. I thought that was good. I'll reread those. Uh, number one, how do we depend on God? Number one was depend on God's wisdom, not our wisdom. Yeah. Number two was depend on God's strength, not our strength. Number three was depend on God's timing, not our timing. And number four was depend on God's wealth, not my wealth. So any yeah. questions about the message, anything that came up, anything that sparked your interest, We'd love to hear, answer any of those questions. Would you like? Kind of- I'm always curious what stood out to people. You know, you're, yeah. you're a preacher, Pastor Jason. It's always good to know. I've always noticed, like, the thing I wanted to hit, rarely hit. And the thing that yeah. I thought would not be a big that deal. That you just thought was like, oh, no big deal. they like, whoa, <laughs> that was big. Yeah. You know, yeah, I think. Every time. I liked, you know, for me, I'll just give you just kind of my, I, and I, I'm serious about this. I think some people will laugh when I say this, but I'm like, you got to remember, this is preached to me all week long. I think there's no coincidence between me preaching it and hearing it as much as I need to hear it, that God's giving me a word. And it's not giving me a word for other people. I think first he's giving me a word. I look at it like this, God, you're giving me a word. What are you doing with this? What in light of this information, how does this change my life? And, and I remember, I remember hearing like sermons you probably did too before, like, or you hear from crazy people where they're like, bless are the poor in spirit. That means yeah. we need to be poor. You need to not have like, you're like, well, that's not what that said actually. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I think I like addressing like, what was God saying? You know, it, and I like bringing out different translations and transliterations of that scripture. You know, I said like, God blesses those who realize their need for him and, Mm-hmm. are spiritually helpless but they depend only on him and i think that there's just like uh god god a happy are the ones that depend truly on god and so i kind of wanted to break them down like so break god break down for their wisdom i know a ton yeah. of people who just get in crazy situations they're godly people they love the lord they mm-hmm. act christian until they need to make a decision and then they depend on, then they're the most radical atheist you would ever hear and ever see. I th- What's that statement? There was a, the practical. 
practical atheism yeah 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 okay yeah yeah it, but it's true right like so you're when you get into practical moments you don't actually allow god into those moments it's called practical atheism most people most christians today are practical atheists yeah yeah <laughs> yeah like you oh oh i'm christian oh yeah I, oh i love jesus i love god okay well let's talk about your let's talk about your money well what do you mean about like why you know well okay let's talk about your marriage well, no. I, okay. Well, what about your parenting? You know, what about how you are with your job and your boss? Like nobody's a Christian in those moments re in reality. Um, I think even what they want to be. And so mm -hmm. for me, I think the wisdom piece was like, get out of the seem good moments. You know, like I, every bad thing I ever did, PJ, I don't know if you're like this. I'm like, man, it just, I, it felt good. good. Yeah. yeah. Like it, it felt like it should have been. <laughs> Seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> And so I think it's just like, to me, that was just a call back to like, hey, you know, like you and I rarely see things 2020. Like we just don't like, so let's just, let's just pretend like, let's just pretend God knows what he's talking about and that he's figured this thing out about yeah. marriage, life, kids, family, yeah. you know, all that. So um, that, that was really, that was good for me because I realized, man, how many times I do that where I'm like, no, I want to yeah. do what I want to do yeah it's good that's good i think that i think that's that's that helps bring some clarity to it understanding uh just how to depend on god and all those all those various ways i heard so much good about that and just my my depend on strength part was um was I think that like, that was really, you know where that came from for me was to parents. That was who I was really mm -hmm. preaching it to is yeah we're doing homeschool right now. And I'm just telling you, it's hard. Like, yeah. And it's beyond homeschool. I think I heard a word today. It was called crisis schooling. You know, it's like, that's what you're really kind of doing. It's not, nobody was like, I mean, again, if you chose to homeschool, I mean, we've homeschooled two of our kids for a couple of years here and there. That's one thing Like you made that choice. This nobody made this choice right now. Um, not to say that God isn't using it, but like you didn't make this choice. So we get like, it, there is some, it's crisis schooling. <laughs> right, right. And I think that's been the issue is like, you do get to, uh, you get to the end of your strength quicker than you never did. You ever, you ever felt, mm -hmm. I don't know about you. I, like, I just feel like I'm like, I'm tired at 630. Yeah. I don't even know why I'm tired at 630. Like I'm tired at 630. Yeah. I don't know why and my wife is and we're like we got five boys running around the house all at different ages and, mm -hmm. and what was that meme you showed me today or yesterday about the kids getting on different platforms oh yeah it was like the teacher log into Zoobalzort and <laughs> look at the Zwack and and you know get your assignments off the Brumble Brort and and and, and and it's like all these apps and things that you're supposed to know. And like, they got a video for it, but the video don't match up what it looks like on your screen. Cause it's a different operating system. You've got a different version. Oh no, no, no. Don't watch that video. That was the video for the first week we were doing this. I don't know why I didn't take it off there, but no, you got to watch this other video yeah. that, uh, we very show that vaguely picture. titled, very vaguely titled. I don't know where it's at right now. We I'll gotta show that it. picture. That guy is the best. Let me see if I can find it. See it if is I can so find funny. it and share it. But that's the truth. So that was why I talked about strength. Was that like, hey, you're gonna run out of strength, and you're supposed. Like, I think the other thing is you're supposed to run out of strength. You're not mm. built for that. Like, no one again. No one chose this. So we're in a. We are in crisis schooling. Like that's a great word for us, PJ. And like. What so the question ultimately comes, what do we do when we come to our end? There it is. Uh, <laughs> Teachers just log into the Zabazoot, scroll down to the Zork app, and have the kids work through the assignment <laughs> sent through Cracklezan or check the links posted in Drumble Kick. Parents, that guy right there. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, what's oh, going on? Oh, that's the best. Oh, that's we're all living life that way right now. I'm just standing here, like looking yeah, at the teacher. Yeah. What what is going on? So yeah, anyway, so I think like um I think for me it was like, so what do we do when we come to our end? Well, we trust in God and and the way you trust in God is that you ask him for help. I think you gotta ask God for it's yeah, not like God don't know you need help, but I think God's gentleman. I always speak of him like that. And I think he's he waits for his invitation. 
Um, and I think sometimes we need to be, I think sometimes our pride keeps us from doing that or our expectation or whatever. And so I think Judah, my Judah riding his bike story was kind of the best way for me to explain mm -hmm. that was he got to so tired. He couldn't get up the hill. Well, it kept him from riding his bike. And if he would have just asked for doubt, I'd have pushed him up that whole hill. I, I, I wouldn't have mattered. And he would have been able to ride his bike. What kept him from riding his bike was his pride. He thought he was too, he thought he was strong mm -hmm. enough. He should be strong yeah. enough. So, um, then the third one, I think, depending on God's timing, I mean, like, wow. Yeah. Is there ever a bed? Is there ever a We're bed? living it out. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think just recognizing one, God's in control of our timing. God's mm -hmm. got, you know, that got, timing is God's, is God's job. Us trusting in it and depending on it is our job. And, um, I thought this was so good. I, when I, when I felt like, I don't even know where I got this idea, but I think like, when I got to the thing that stood out to me in timing was that mm -hmm. waiting is a season. Yeah. Like waiting is a season. And I think because we're so used to instant microwave, everything, right. Instant, mm -hmm. instant, everything. We were used to sowing and then we're like, okay, I sowed now, where do I reap? But, but the true law of sowing and reaping has a season of waiting. Yeah. And, and if you, uh, th this makes total sense to farmers, makes no sense to us mm -hmm. because I don't farm. I go yeah. to the store when I'm hungry, I order it on an app and then the app gives me the time, like what an incredible season we live in. Yeah. And, and so I, I rarely wait. And when mm -hmm. I have to wait, it makes me angry. And yeah. so I think the waiting is a season was for me stood out to me mm -hmm. really big point. And if I'm going to truly depend on God, then I got to remember that sometimes I got to wait. Like, mm -hmm. and then even while I'm waiting, that doesn't mean God's not working. And that even though I'm delayed, it's not a denial. I just have to recognize like I'm waiting right now. This is a season mm -hmm. of waiting. What's that great Christian statement? Like, well, uh, we get frustrated because God doesn't answer us. But, in, you know, when there's a test going on, the teacher mm -hmm. is silent, right? I love that. Yeah. I love that. that yeah. vision. It's like, that's so good mm -hmm. that he's just, he's waiting. We're waiting and we're, 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 we're being tested in so many ways and that he's not in a hurry and that if in his timing, it happens instantly. So that's um, good. It's a good that word. Was, that was kind of just my, the thing that kind of stepped back from me. And then, um, um, and then I think the last one was just depend on God's wealth, which I just, that was just a word for our, for just everybody right now. You know, yeah. what's the number one thing going out there? Stimulus checks and economy and what's going to happen to our jobs and investments and bank accounts and job loss and all that. And I think for me, I was just trying to get, I, 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 I always go back again. I'm a pastor. So I'm like, I'm always like, man, I got to, I have to go and get my wealth on, mm -hmm. you know, I got to make sure that I'm going to, that, that if I don't do it, it's not going to be done. And yeah. man, I just think that, that I, I love, and that's why I put Philippians four in there. It's like, God's yeah. God, God going to take care of me. Amen. He's going to supply all my needs. I'm in Christ Jesus. There's nothing that I have to worry about. And if I lost a channel, that doesn't mm -hmm. mean I lost my source. Yeah. And my job is a channel. And I think that was a big thing. My mm -hmm. God is a channel. My job is a channel, but, but God is my source. And just cause I lost my job or I lost my whatever, you know, that, that I just lost a channel of the source. I didn't lose the source yeah. and, and so the good. source is unlimited and yeah. just being resting in that, you know, as, cause you know, again, like government's not our supply. Government mm -hmm. is not our source. You know, some people are getting the stimulus checks and they're like, you know, man, thank God for the, no, that's just a, so that's just a channel. That's just a yeah. channel, you know, that, that you're able to get blessed through and, and you need to be faithful with the stuff that God's given to you, you know, and, mm -hmm. and walk that out. So that's why I said at the end, God is more than enough and he will provide for me. I kind of made everybody at the house. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you need to say it, you know, that's right. God yeah. has more than enough and he will provide for me. That's good. That's a good word for us. God has more than enough. He will provide for me. Yes. And then that, that really would, he has more than enough wisdom more than enough strength his timing again it's more than enough his wealth more than enough that it really applies to all the points uh, right like where do we doubt that god is enough <laughs> right 
Right. It's good. Well, it looks like we're hitting close to an hour here. We did have one more question, uh, kind of an unrelated question, but Crystal asked this, um, that uh, we, we uh, she asked, how, where or how can we dive deeper into the meaning of the word, the Bible that is, the way you are both able to? So in other words, how do we, how can, how can a, a person dive deeper into God's word? Like under, I think, you know, mainly I'm guessing like the understanding and the, the up, the out. what, what are some resources that you think pastor Aaron, that people should be using and, and gaining a greater understanding of the word. So I, I have a theory um, and, and it's not my theory. I think, you know, I, I learned the Bible from some of the best Bible teachers. Um, I learned how to preach and, and teach from some of the best Bible teachers in the country, you know, um, all the way from, from the people that I used to work for, um, the guys we used to work for the, I mean, there's mm -hmm. some great Bible teachers and, um, I, I've just noticed that great Bible teachers and I always used to ask, how do they get, you know, what do they get? There's nothing new under the sun and any pastor who, who doesn't use resource to, to bring enlightenment, I think is prideful. And I mm -hmm. think, they, I think they, they kind of lie to themselves a little bit about what, what they're really doing, you know? And I think, mm -hmm. um, God gives us wisdom. Um, and I heard this statement one time that I thought was really good that if you hear a thought or a sermon or a point that, that, that you felt really impacted you, then it, it deserves to be re-preached, re-said, mm -hmm. re-talked about, re, 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 mm -hmm. re-engaged with. And so, um, but because I, you know, what I learned from some of the best Bible teachers about getting content and getting insight um, was number one, learn how to read the Bible um, for yourself yeah, and in, so a way, in a way that you can digest it yourself. So mm -hmm. I think when it comes to formulas in the Bible, it just doesn't work. So I know like for you, Pastor Jason, you're an incredible Bible reader. Um, you ingest content the way that you ingest caramel ice venti caramel macchiatos. It's you, true. It is you, true. You suck it in. And I think like, you know, you'll tell me some of your Bible reading plans and how you digest the word and books you read. And it gives me anxiety because I'm like, well, number one, I can't read that fast. Number two, I don't even, I have to go back and read. I feel dumb sometimes where I'll be like, I read a whole chapter and I'm like, I don't understand what any of that guy just said. I got to go reread it again. And so mm -hmm. I'll have to like, um, I really take time. So it's funny. I sip the word more than I chug the word. And, but I know guys, I mean, like I said, you are like that. You can digest a lot of information and process it. And that's how you study the word of God. And, um, sometimes I'm envious of that. I just, man, I, I just don't study it that way. I can't, it's hard for, I take a verse. It's like, I'm better at taking mm -hmm. a verse and really unpacking it or finding a verse. Like what I kind of look at it a little more like, um, um, like I don't pull it out of the sky. Somebody told me that one time. They're like, you just get it from heaven. I don't get it from heaven. I have to like unearth it. Mm -hmm. uh, I have dig to, it up. Yeah. It up. Yeah. I have yeah. to dig it. Like I, I, I have to fight for it. I, and I, so I'll work through scriptures and then I feel like God highlights a nugget. And I'm like, Oh, that spoke to me. And so I have to read it for myself first. Um, but then like, so, so that's what I try to do. I try to get some self-reflection before I go into anybody else. And I think that's important because I think if you get to right now, the world's so resourced, you know, there was a day PJ, when you and I preached before back in the day, we, there was no, there was no yeah. online commentaries. There was no, you had to spend a lot of money. And unless you were like a professional pastor, you didn't just, you couldn't justify buying a 50 volume commentary on the book of John that costs, four thousand dollars right like you just yeah. didn't yeah so for unless i think i think right now the lost art of reading the bible and listening to god for you is is a lost art and so i think you got to stick with it but find your strategy so yeah some of you out there could be like pastor jason and you ingest a lot of it and you're able to filter it. So I kind of think of you as like, you're a panner, like you're like a, a, you know, when you're panning for gold, you get a bunch of dirt in there and then you find the nuggets after you wash with a bunch of gold. For me, I have to like 
stay in one section and slowly move through it and go, do I like this? I have to examine the P I don't even know what that's saying. Okay. I got to move on. So I'm slower at it, but that's how I kind of get personal revelation. I think once you learn how to do that, then I think moving to like a comment, a good commentary is great where you're able to read what great theologians or Bible scholars know how to do and walk, work through it. Um, there's some great insight. Um, study Bibles um, are really good. Those are like basic to me. Those are like basic commentaries to so study Bibles um, where they're able to kind of give you, I have a, a, I actually have one right here. Hold on. So, uh, so here's a, here's an example of a study Bible that again, so like if you're a new Christian, like I actually wouldn't, um, I, I wouldn't uh, necessarily say not to do this because this is, these are great ways to figure out what the Bible is actually saying. And so finding a version that you like, so this is an ESV version and it's a study Bible. So I don't know if you guys can see that yeah. it's just called a study Bible, but they have them in every version. So you can get an NLT version. That's a transliteration. So you, that's a new living translation. And then you can get a study Bible and then, um, and then you can kind of open it up. But what's neat about it, and you could do these online, by the way, these are all, they could, they have a digital yeah. version of this. Um, but like, you can kind of see, I'll kind of try to show it to you online. I don't know if you guys see it, but like, so for instance, like the top part of this is the scripture and then it has a little number and then it goes to the bottom and you can read about what it's saying. And so like, you know, it's some of the Bible is extra incredibly hard to know what they're saying, especially context, what's happening, what the language means. So I just opened it up to Jeremiah chapter uh, 49 verse one. And it's the, so, so 49 verse one, and it says concerning the Ammonites, thus says the Lord, has Israel no sons? Has he no heir? Why then has Millicom disposed Gad and his people settled in his cities? What? Right. Gad, who's Gad? Who, you know, like what, what does disposed mean? How did, you know, who is, who is Rahab? Like who's Milcom? What, what sons? You don't know what's going on. So you just look 49 and you look at Ammonites. And so in the bottom of the thing, the study Bible says people living North of Moab, their capital was Rabbah, present day Ammon. During Joachim's reign, they raided Judah and they conspired with Judah and others against Babylon and Zedekiah's reign. And then it says Milcom. Here's who Milcom is. Ammon's chief God. You would never have known, like, you don't know that unless you study. So I think some of these study Bibles, and that's it. That's for verse one. You're able to figure out, oh, that's what that means. So yeah. I think that's a great way to get insight to scripture. A lot of people are afraid of study Bibles because I think they think they're just for pastors or people who are theologians. Honestly, some of the best thing I did when I first started reading the Bible is I got a good study Bible. And then I was able to just start with a chapter and read through it and figure out what does it actually mean? Who are these people? Where did they come from? Um, and break it down. And then I think the next one would be getting into commentaries and, um, you know, doctorate dissertations on things. Some of those things are really good books on, on, I know there's a lot of good books out there on chapters and script, which I think are commentaries, but they're maybe they're written differently. Um, those are some of the ways that I could dig deep dive any, I mean, any insight from you, PJ? Oh, I think that, I think those were all good. I think, I, I think there's no shortcut to it. Um, we didn't get here overnight. We're still on the path. We have not arrived. Um, we're still learning. We're still growing. And uh, anybody who's like, well, I already know all there is to know about the Bible. I would just question that person's, um, you know, you know, again, the keys that we tell people interpret scripture with scripture. Um, what did it mean to the Jewish people? Understanding context is huge to me. Study a lot of like culture, Hebraic culture to understand like what did the first century Christian. I mean, I love the, I, I suggest this to everybody, the Bible project you know, either their podcasts or their videos. My I know you version uses them. They, we use them for kids ministry. We use them for all sorts of things. Um, so good. they're good. It, it's so good. I listen to the, I listen to their podcast. Um, it helps me dive into things. I love, they give some suggestions of things to read depending on, again, it just depends on your, your wiring. Um, you know, as pastor Aaron said, I'm wired, I'm wired differently. I, I do still do verse by verse things. Um, but Often I get more out of a big picture. I love to see the big picture. Um, but right now I'm going verse by verse in Galatians. And I've been at that since the 11th of January. So, and I won't finish anytime soon. So I'm verse 
uh, chapter one, verse three right now, or four, I think. So I, I, I will say this too, and I think not being afraid of listening to other preachers that mm -hmm. teach differently. You know, yeah. sometimes people, I like, I, I really appreciate when people ask me my preaching style and, and not judging me because I wasn't like the pastor that yeah. they used to have or whatnot. And I genuinely want to know because people are like, what's the most effective way to preach? Uh, my answer is yes. Um, whichever way you do it. <laughs> yeah. I think like, cause I know some guys are real big on exegetic, exegetical preaching, you know, where they take a yeah. passage of scripture. There's guys we know in our, you know, other camps of Christianity and they'll preach the book of John for the year and they'll go, yeah. we're going to take one verse today. And we're going to walk through this whole verse this week. And, you know, you got 52 week series on John. I, I couldn't, I'm not saying I will never do that. I'm just saying I couldn't do that in my current state. I'm, I'm, I'm a little, my mind's just, I'd get bored real quick. And so they're like, well, you're not teaching the whole Bible. Uh, no, that's not true. We teach the whole Bible. We teach every aspect yeah. of the Bible. We just have a different strategy in doing it. And so I think people find what they like and then they make that the way to do it. And then they defend yeah. it. And the only way to properly defend your way is to make someone else's way look bad. And so in their minds anyway. And so I think what I try to do is just celebrate all kinds of things. So I have guys, I like to listen to guys. One guy, people, person asked me, I could teach, I used to teach, you know, preaching classes, you know, and then I used to, I did that for other churches and tried to help other pastors. And one of the ways I used to tell people, like, listen to different preachers for different things. So every yeah. pastor has got his strength. So I listen to different, like I listen to a preacher right now. And all I listen to him for, I don't listen to him for biblical content. You know what I listen to him for? I listen to how he tells stories. He's yeah. one of the best storyteller I've ever seen. Um, mm -hmm. I want to hear his inflections, how he tells a story, how he wraps it to the verse, how he adjusts mm -hmm. it. He can bring you in. That's powerful. Um, I listen to another preacher because of his exegetical ability to break down a passage in scripture. I hit like, I didn't even see that. How did you see that? I listen yeah, to another good. preacher on how he, how he ebbs and flows inside of a, of a verse. I listen to another preacher on his creativity, how he's able to take that and make it relevant to us, take an old tense, old first century thought and make it relevant to a new century world. Mm -hmm. Like I, so I think the uh, one of the great ways to go deeper in scripture is to find great Bible teachers who teach them differently. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's good. I think obviously we have more uh, resources today than ever before. The Bible app, you know, with ver with, with ver very, all the free versions there. And I know it is good to have a, a paper Bible that you read from, but, you know, being able to read digitally, I do read digitally now. I, I do read some in paper still, but primarily digitally is, I know everyone says, I get so distracted. I understand that, you know, you do what you have to do there, but there are infinite ways to study scripture when it comes to that, whether it's like, Hey, I'm really interested in scriptures on fear. All right. Well, they got 500 plans for that anxiety. Okay. I'm going to, I got 500 plans for that peace. All right. I got plans for that. Or I just want to read through the book of John. And I want to, you know, right now, as I said, I'm reading through Galatians. I read through literally every plan I could find on you version on Galatians before I started. I'm just like, Hey, I'm going to read through it again and again. I'm going to change versions. I'm going to look at it in different versions. I'm going to find people who are conservative. I'm going to find people who have a little bit more liberal view on this. I'm going to have people who have different opinions and this, it's going to help me form what my opinion is by looking at it, taking it in context and understanding some of the things. So, you know, those are just a few of the things I know we're over an hour now, so I don't know. Uh, we want to wrap up. I don't see any other questions out there, but anything you want to add before we go, Pastor Aaron? I love you. Can't wait to see everybody soon. And uh, if you are a parent um, of, uh, of a teenager going to camp, I think we're going to be doing a, uh, a little video for them soon. Yep. So if you have Two o'clock. Yeah, if you're a camp kid and your parent is uh, available, get them on at 2 o'clock. So. It's good. All right. Well, you guys have a great day and we will see you now. We'll get a guest next week too. Don't forget log yes. in. Week. We have a, a guest that we will tell you All about. All right. That. Come back next week. Same bat time, same bat <laughs> channel. All right. Bye.